Welcome to the longest running sports show in Pittsburgh television history. Now, from our North Shore studio, Saverin on Sports Beat, brought to you by PNC Bank, leading the way. I kind of feel like Tom Sawyer, who was able to attend his own funeral. Hopefully, they'll come to praise me, not to bury me. That's where we're here tonight to praise Sports Beat, but not to bury it. Perhaps sometimes you've stood in front of a mirror and said to yourself after a few years, how did I get here? I found myself thinking a lot about that. In the next two hours, we're going to take the journey that began in March of 1991 and ends tonight. We've got a number of guests, some already in the studio, and some, to be totally honest, I have no idea who they are or when they'll be on. Of course, that was true most nights of the program. We're also going to look back at some of the great moments, some of the fun moments that we've had here in Sportsbeat, and also a visit later in the program by a man who was tremendously important to the development of this show and very important to me personally. That's what we have on the agenda for you this evening. For those of you who have sent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails, I'm going to do my best to answer each and every one of you personally. I hope you'll forgive me if it takes me some time, although... I do have some time on my hands now, come to think of it, but not totally. I want to reiterate what we announced on Friday, that while Sportsbeat will end tonight, I am not leaving FSN. I've agreed to stay on. I'll continue to be the host of Pirate pregame shows, Penguin pregame shows, Penguin postgame shows in the playoffs, hopefully through the Stanley Cup Finals one more time, hosting the Mike Tomlin Press Conference and the Mike Tomlin Show. So sports beat might end tonight, but my career at FSN hopefully will continue for quite some time. A lot has transpired in the last 18 or so years. These are just some of the things that we've done during that time. It's scary. This is an estimate, but we are above 4,700 shows. Does it show on my face? We've had nearly 10,000 guests, not counting tonight. We might be up near 11,000 by the time it's over. And by a conservative estimate, coming up on 38,000 callers to the show during the time that we have been on the air. And we're also, in case you weren't thinking for staying around for the entire two hours, we've got a reason for you to stay. Tonight, at the end of the program, we will reveal the true identity of Mr. Monday Night. For years, we've been passing off that look as a bad skin condition. But no, that's not the case. There's something underneath that, and by the end of the program, we will reveal exactly who Mr. Monday Night is. When we return here on this final night of Sportsbeat, we'll go back to the very, very beginning of the first show and how we got to this point, and also a special visit from Greg Brown and Bob Walk from our Pirate Broadcasting team. Thanks for joining us on this most special occasion. I'm delighted that you're with me tonight as you have been for the last 18 years. Hi, Stan. This is Elsie Greenwood. I just want to thank you for the last 17 years that you uh, spent with the uh, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers and Sports Beat, uh, the, the coverage. Uh, you did uh, great coverage, and we became uh, good friends. Uh, thank you very much for what you've done and continue the good work. Hi, we're the original producers of Sports Beat. We even predate Stan on this show. And this is the voice that you heard on the other end of that phone taking all your phone calls for many years. But now she's our production manager. I've learned a lot working with Stan and Guy on Sports Beat over the years. I've learned how to uh, keep a baseball scorecard. Um, I've learned never to substitute French vanilla coffee in Stan's coffee pot. That's a no-no for sure. And I've also learned a lot about uh, passion, having passion and dedication for doing what you love to do. Um, we have a lot of memories um, over the long run of Sports Beat, a lot of which we can't repeat on camera. Absolutely not. What's your favorite memory or story, Matt? Don't know if it's my favorite, but it's a funny one, I think. It involves Stan and Guy. We don't cover a lot of NBA here in Pittsburgh, but we had two NBA guests scheduled. One was a local product, Armin Gilliam. The okay. other was a lesser known uh, product named Theo Ratliff. We rush them on the set, they were late. We sneak them in, we don't do a lot of introductions. So we get him on. Stan asks the first question to Armin Gillum. He responds. Guy then asks a question who he thought was Theo Ratliff. The guy says, I'm not Theo Ratliff. <laughs> and then Guy follows up with one of the greatest questions of all time, follow-up questions, and says, well, then who are you? <laughs> they snuck a PR guy on 
funny story that happened on the air. Well, that's one from the archives that I forgot yeah. about. I'd like to give a final toast to Sports Beat um, for the 18 years. Um, it was a great run, and good luck to Stan and Guy. Love the show. Thanks, guys. A producer almost lost his life uh, that night for the Armand Gilliam gaffe, and there's Matt and Gina there. They were so identified with Sports Beat that people actually thought that Matt's last name was Angina because you never spoke about one without mentioning the other. It was always Matt and Gina, Matt and Gina, and they thought that Angina was his last name. Those two did predate me, and I'll tell you something about them, about keeping Sports Beat on the air and afloat. They were interns at then KBL. After their internship expired, they worked for another nine, ten months without any pay whatsoever. They came to work every day, just like Guy and I did, hoping that they would catch on. And because they didn't have to pay them and they worked so hard, we were able to stay afloat long enough to get them full-time jobs. And now they're both big shots. How about that? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You're the best. You're the best. We're joined now by two more of the best. And of course, um, sports, well, well, we'll get to them in just a moment. Uh, my first mistake, and it only took me eight and a half minutes this time. Normally, it's much earlier than this. We talk about the early days of sports beat. Uh, Matt was our, has been our director, really, since uh, we first came on the air and for, I first joined in 92. Gina did answer the phone calls. She was the voice that you heard how pleasant. We also, another timeline issue, we, the staff, we actually taught Gina bad words. She didn't say any bad words whatsoever until she got around us. Now she's like a sailor, docked. Uh, on the river. So we're proud of that accomplishment uh, as well. But Sportsbeat actually got its start one year before I arrived. The year, the month, March of 1991. Sportsbeat made its debut March 11, 1991. For the first year, the shows came to you from the studios of KDKA TV, where Bob Pompiani and Guy Junker worked as the original co hosts. The first set was rather crude and it would have been a struggle to keep a lemonade stand in business on that budget. But somehow we survived just long enough for our relationship with KDKA to sour. After 245 shows, we moved. Sportsbeat's not moving. Still on at 7 o'clock each weeknight here on KBL, but I got a new partner to help me out. Yeah, Mr. Junker, excuse me. Uh, are these the papers you wanted? Stan, put those right over there. Yes, sir, right away. I'd be glad to. Stan Saffron and me, Guy Junker, weeknights at 7. That was over 14 years ago when neither Guy nor I were married. We were thinner and had a whole lot more hair. We spent more than five years working out of WPXI studios where we celebrated our 1,000th show in 1995. Little old KBL eventually was swallowed up by the Prime Sports Network. We got some great new TV digs. This time it took us a little longer to wear out our welcome as we eventually were forced to move again. I think it was something that I said, again. And here, you thought that the porch tour was just a brilliant marketing campaign. It was actually out of necessity we had no place to go. So, we packed up all our junk and moved yet again. Prime became Fox, and thankfully, they built us brand new facilities, and in May of 1997, the ribbon for the new studio was cut. There must be something about that month of May, because in May of 2003, it was subtraction by subtraction, as Guy and Fox parted company, and I lost my partner of nearly a dozen years. No one, not Rob King, nor Pat Paris, nor Trenny Kaznarek, nor Dan Potash could stand working with me, apparently, so for the past three years, I've been going it alone on the Sports Beat set. Actually, the past six years, that was recorded, that history compilated in 2006. And, of course, we moved into our brand-new North Shore Studios two years ago in April of 2007. And as I was truncated in what I was about to say, we are joined by two of the best, our FSN Pirate Broadcast team. Of course, you know Greg Brown and Bob Walk. And I'm reminded of what W.C. Fields put on his tombstone, better here than in Philadelphia. And given the weekend, I would imagine that 
even being here, you're a lot better off. Guys, welcome. Hey, thanks so much. And, boy, what, a, what an honor it is for us uh, to be thank here. You. Thanks. Uh, thank Congratulations. For, well, thank you for, for coming in. You guys both joined the broadcast crew. Now, old sports beat is so long, Bob was still pitching when, when yeah, the show was, started uh, on the air. Know, when I uh, was watching there very early, uh, all those shots you had, uh, I was thinking back, boy, 91, I was still out on the mound playing and and we were doing pretty well at that time too back then. Yeah. So that that was a probably a fun time baseball wise to get get the show going. Yeah, it, it was a good time. And I, we'll mention later. Of course, we came on the air. The Penguins won their first cup. The Pirates uh, were in the middle of a heyday at that point, and without a question of a doubt, that really helped sports beat get off the ground because the interest. Chuck Knoll was retiring. Mm -hmm. Bill Cowher came in. It was a great time for us to begin. Although I, you may argue this, Stan, I think that uh, you probably realize over the years how intense and passionate Pirate fans are. Um, I'm sure during the Pirates' heyday, sports beat was the top, and, and still is, but during Pittsburgh Pirate uh, baseball in the early 90s, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you, you having started the, uh, with sports beat and Guy Junker and, and what a job you guys did, but with Pirates baseball the last several years, um, the passion is still there. Well, it is, and that's how uh, I don't judge a sports town by how many people show up at the games. I judge by the callers, whether it's here or on radio. I listen to what they say, and they're not happy. And when they're not happy, that shows that they're paying attention, that they care. The worst thing you want is a group of fans that are apathetic. No question. That's, you, you want them to be passionate, whether they're happy or angry. Yeah, yeah if, if they're not talking about you either way, then, uh, then you're in trouble, that's for sure. That's the way we've always felt that, uh, you know, if people are upset, well, then that means they still care and, uh, and they still want a, uh, a winning team and they want to uh, be a part of, of what's going to happen down there. But um, well, to, to, to get on a little bit brighter subject, uh, I mean, you have to really uh, you know, be happy when you look back and, uh, and think of some of the, the characters you've met through the Pittsburgh Pirates over the years, players and coaches alike. Uh, Broadcasters. A, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of crazies out there. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot of fun. <laughs> You're stealing your own. There, then there's the, that, that's why I love the format, because you never really know who's on the end of the, end of the line. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I was going to ask you, just you can tell us now, although we're going to continue this because I'll still be doing prior pregame shows, how annoying are the questions that we have to ask you in the pregame? <laughs> Uh, they're a lot of fun, to, to be honest with you. I really enjoy it. I look forward to that every day. It, it kind of gets me ready a little bit for the game. I start thinking about the questions that I was asked, and uh, I, I really enjoy it. I, I think it's great. Um, the only trouble sometimes we can't hear you too well because I can't hear. But, You're probably uh, better off, yeah, Bob. You ever stop and think about that? But, but other than that, I, that's one of the, the things every day I look, I look forward to the most is uh, you know, talking, to, talking to you and answering the questions. Well, we don't thank you enough, Bob. We do at the end of the season, but we don't thank you enough for getting involved with the pregame show and Greg for you doing the postgame show, you and Tim and Steve and John and everybody. We appreciate that. And, it, you know, we're the pregame show, we're the postgame show, but it makes us feel at least a little bit like part of the game broadcast. Well, you are. Stan, I think I, you're going to get this for two hours. You're going to get people. That you've got audience here. I mean, I can speak as a, as a Pittsburgher. You are Pittsburgh. You're Pittsburgh sports. And it's a, it truly is an honor for us to be here tonight and to have watched Sports Beat for so many years because you've brought sports to us. And, uh, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, and I know uh, Pittsburgh is feeling that way tonight. Well, thank you very much. That's a great compliment coming from you and from you, Bob. We appreciate you being on here. And we, we've got a phone call. And again, I don't know everybody's okay, going to be on the show. They told me to you know, keep you here. I know you want to get out as quickly as possible, but <clears throat> I feel like what's my line? Anybody here old enough to remember what's my line? Mystery guest, sign in, please. Hello. Yes, uh, first-time caller from uh, Sun Valley, Idaho. You know, I told oh, them to man. fire the call screener yesterday, <laughs> and they didn't do it. And Steve Blass, welcome. Nice to have you. How are you, Steve? Do I win anything for calling from the furthest distance? Well, the good thing is you don't have to look at Walk or Brown. That's, <laughs> that's worth something, isn't it? Well, I, I'll tell you, I have to look at them far too often. Steve Blass, Dan. Really? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for signing in. Well, yeah, how far I'm away gone. are you, Steve? Uh, how far gone are you? I think is a better way to uh, is a better way to phrase. Are you really in Idaho? Smart butt remark for me. So I've, you've interviewed me enough. I want to I want to make a little statement to you. All right. You ready? Yes. And I happen to write it down before I start drinking. Oh. <laughs> You know, with I, you, I, I, I thought there was, there was I, no I, such I, thing as before you started drinking. I just thought it was a continuum. 
Well, if, uh, on occasion it is, but I, I wanted to call Stan because, and, and I wrote this down because I want to get it right. You, you really, you're going to hear this uh, as, as Greg just said uh, for for a lot of hours. But you have brought professionalism and integrity to a to a genre that doesn't always have it. Uh, you've informed, you've entertained our sports fans, and, and I, as a result, I really believe that our sports fans are better off uh, because of what you've uh, brought to sports beat. Uh, the integrity and, and uh, professionalism has never wavered. I thought he said he was going to wait till after he drank. Yeah, no, Steve, well, uh, <laughs> he lied. <laughs> Quit stepping on Steve. Now I want to hear everything he has to say. <laughs> Steve, um, I, you know how much I admire you, and, and um, I, I thank you so much for, for those very kind words. Coming from you, that's the ultimate compliment. Thanks so much. Well, I, I also want to tell you something else. Walk is a liar. We're scared to death when you ask those questions. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a stone liar. I have no. I I don't have answers, and I want to say I don't know. Because, but you can't have dead air. <laughs> well, you know what? I've always heard the line. It was issued by a pirate pitcher named Bob Johnson, a teammate of yours, Steve. And and he uh, wouldn't answer a question from a reporter. And the reporter said, "If you think my questions are dumb, you ought to hear some of my answers." <laughs> <laughs> Steve, thank you very well, much. I, we appreciate I, the call. I miss the chance to call. We're we're out here on a little vacation. We're coming home tomorrow, but. Uh, you, you ought to be very proud of what you've done, Stan, because it's been done uh, on, on, the, on the high ground. Uh, you've taken the, the high road so many times when uh, I'm sure it's been tempting to take the other, the other side. But uh, uh, you've, you've, you've bought that integrity. I, I keep coming back to that point. Uh, and and uh, we'll miss sports beat, but uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on, on the home games for sure. All right, Steve, I'll look forward to seeing you on Friday then. Take care, man. Congratulations. Right. Thank you, Steve. Thanks very much. Now, you're going to be, a, it's kind of like Steve. You're just, you know, backing away a little bit. You're not going anywhere. You're going to be around it's all the time. Off a bit. Just like Steve is. But are you going to take as many vacations as Steve Blast takes? I don't think there are that many it's days the, in the year. I think I turn around. He's, he's in a different state somewhere. Most people operate on the Gregorian calendar. He's on some, of course, he's on a different planet anyway. Um, Steve, thank you very much. Greg, Bob, thank you. It's great. I've always enjoyed working with you, and I'll look forward to continuing that in the future. And thanks for all your kind words. Well, again, sincerely. Congratulations. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Thank see you, you at the Bob. ballpark. Yeah. I'll see you at the That's ballpark right. Friday night, as a matter of fact. When we return, there have been some great things that have happened over the last 18 years. Here's Brian Lasick. He, he, he is the historian for Sportsbeat. He's the historian. Jack Becker produced this show. When we come back, some of the great championships won in Pittsburgh during our tenure on the air. Thanks, Dan, for the longest show in Pittsburgh sports history. Love, love, love the show. Dan, this is Dan Honorado. I just want to say congratulations on a long run with Sportsbeat. I enjoyed watching you over the years and being informed of what was happening in the local sports scene. Now, I know you're sticking around, going to be doing other things. I look forward to whatever you decide to do, and I want to congratulate you on that long run. I also want you to look down on your desk tonight. You should have a copy or the original of this proclamation. On behalf of the 1.2 million people in Allegheny County, we thank you for a great run and look forward to your future. Thanks, Stan. Congratulations. Oh, Stan, my. To deliver that, and I couldn't be more proud and happy to do that. Well earned. Congratulations. Thank you, Paul. I uh, can't believe this. Um, from Dan Honorado, the county executive, he was smart enough to talk me out of a career in politics. Um, he said, stick with what you're doing. You're probably better at that. This is overwhelming. Um, thank you. I'll cherish this for the rest of my life, however many weeks that might be. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> I think, I hope. Thank you, uh, Dan. He's become a good personal friend. I thought he was going to say, I've been watching you since I was a kid. That would have hurt. Well, that might, might have been true. When Sportsbeat came on the air, the Pittsburgh Steelers had not won a Super Bowl for more than a decade. The Penguins had never won a Stanley Cup. And the Pirates hadn't won a World Series, even made the playoffs for more than a decade. Ma, look what's happened now. Sportsbeat has been on board for some of the most thrilling and devastating moments in Pittsburgh sports history. The Stanley Cup has come to the city of Pittsburgh. The 1991 Stanley Cup champions, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Hold it high, buddy. And we're extremely proud to let you know that in the last 50 years, we're only one of 10 teams that will put up the Stanley Cup championship better. Well, you know, it's... 39 years in professional football is a, a goodly time. If you 
right for 39 years, maybe you ought to think about it too. <laughs> the one thing that I felt, and I, and I feel very strongly about this, was it was a no-lose situation for me. I had a great job with the Kansas City Chiefs, and I had a great opportunity to come here. They'll drop the puck. It's free. Out right side, Murphy. Shooting. Same may rebound on the view. Hey! Shoots and scores! Mario Lemieux and the Penguins lead. Five to four, and you'd have to be here to believe it. Five seconds to go. Loose around to the far corner. Two seconds. The Penguins are going to win the Stanley Cup, I believe. Stanley O shoots it block. The Penguins have won the Stanley Cup. Oh, Lord Stanley. Lord Stanley, get me the brandy. The cup stays here. It belongs here. Line drive and a base hit. Just as the score of the tying run. Green to the play. And he is safe. This was devastating. This was awful. And it hurts. And it's going to hurt for a long time. First day when I found out uh, that I had Hodgkin's disease, uh, it was certainly a tough day for myself and my family. It is a great pleasure for me to announce today that Mario Lemieux will play again for the Pittsburgh Penguins starting this season. I feel 100% better than I did um, this time last year. Drop it up for Lemieux. He's right there. His shot. Penguins, Mario Lemieux. Mario has taken the ice to a standing ovation from the crowd here at the Mellon Arena. The number one overall selection in the 2005 NHL entry draft belongs to Pittsburgh Penguins. Still a loose puck picked up by Ricky. As 18 years ever gone by so quickly, those great moments sure make up for the, the bad ones. Hope you enjoyed that retrospective. Boy, a flood, a million memories watching that. I'm told we have another special guest or guest on the phone line. Mystery guest, check in, please. 
Hello, Stan. It's uh, Eddie Olchek calling from Chicago and wanted to congratulate you on a unbelievable run there at FSN, 18 tremendous years on Sports Beat, and uh, from my family uh, to you and all your uh, great supporters over the years, congratulations. A hell of a run, and uh, glad to have been a part of some positives and some negatives, but congratulations, Stan. It's been a hell of a run for you. Oh, Ed, so it's so kind of you to, to, to check in. You were always so respectful of me, and uh, hopefully it was reciprocal, but I want to hear about the five hundred grand you won at the track. Forget about this sports beat garbage. Come on. <laughs> you know, when you were on radio with us a couple months ago, during you gave us a tip on the derby, no good. You gave us a tip on the precursor, no good. Now you hit the pick six at Hollywood Park. You keep it all to yourself. What's up? Well, every squirrel finds a nut. You know that. <laughs> But, uh, that's, those, how, that's how uh, FSN found me. Yeah, one of those, uh, one of those lucky days and uh, thrilled to have, uh, have hit that. And regardless of what it is, it's all about the competitive nature. But uh, it was a lot of fun, a great thrill. And, uh, as you know, I'm a big, uh, a big advocate of horse racing and a big thoroughbred supporter. So it was a great thrill for me. But I just wanted to check in. I know you've got tons of people that want to chime in but uh, Stan it's, it's been a lot of fun and you know if you ever need anything uh, make sure that uh, you give me a call and uh, like congratulations on 18 great years on Sportsbeat. Thank you Ezo very much and from everybody here in Pittsburgh enjoy Marion Hosa up there in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> thank a you. Couple months, a couple of months before hockey season so we'll see you soon Stan. All right Ezo thanks very much. Okay buddy thank you. All right Ezo of course a broadcaster with FSN and of course the former head coach of the Pittsburgh Penguins, a guy who's brought an awful lot of smiles to Steeler Nation all over the world. Kevin Colbert, the general manager of the Pittsburgh Steelers, joins me next. Thanks so much for joining us on this grand finale. We hope it's grand. We hope you're enjoying it. Don't forget, a little bit later on, oh, there's an original. Yep. I can't fit in that T-shirt any longer, only because Guy got too heavy. He's taking up too much of his part. By the way, Mr. Monday Night, Stay around because we're going to reveal his true identity under that bag. He's usually half in the bag anyway. We'll be back right after this. Stan Saverin, you captured the sports beat in Pittsburgh for 18 years. Engine company number six says, thank, thank you. you. We love you. Love the, love the show. My name is Roger Lenhart, producer of sports beat for the past 15 years. Stan, a lot of fond memories, a lot of great times road trips to all over the place, Stanley Cups, Super Bowls, great time, great time. But the one memory I have, and to this day you still don't know, I, uh, I told you we had 10 seconds left. You decided that you were going to go longer that day. Well, I told Houston, our master control, to take the commercial break at the end of the show. And when we did, you continued to talk. You thought you made it on time, but you didn't. That's one I have on you. I have a lot of great memories, Stan. Thank you. I think the most flattering thing, one of them, Roger Lenhart has been literally my right-hand man, and his parents go around telling people, my son Roger is Stan Saverin's right-hand man. That may not be meant as a compliment, but he has been. Without him, um, we wouldn't have lasted 18 years. Just, just a brief capsule. You're out here pretty much <clears throat> alone, and you have to rely on so many people, many you've seen here tonight, uh, many you may not get a chance to meet. But they really run the show. I, you see me, but without them, this doesn't happen. And I have to have complete faith in them. If they tell me something, I go with it automatically. If Roger Lenhart says to me, so-and-so happened, I never question it, I never pause, I say it on the air. That's how much faith and trust you have to have with the people, the staff who are behind all of this. And Roger, indeed, has been more than just a right-hand man. He supported me above all everybody else here. Thank you, Raj. Speaking of a guy who's been a great friend of Sportsbeat and uh, has supported a winning habit here in Pittsburgh, Kevin Colbert, the Director of Football Operations for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I haven't had a chance to talk to you much. Congratulations. It's oh. never too late to say congratulations on another Super Bowl, is it? No, thanks. I mean, it's, it, it, it's kind of wrapping up, and, you know, you forget about last year, and you're really getting ready for training camp. I think it's 18 days, so appreciate it, but, you know, it's time to get ready for next year. You know, you above all people, aside from the fact that you're in the industry, you're a Pittsburgh guy. You're a Pittsburgh native, and you've lived almost your entire life here. And I think you, more than most people, get what Pittsburgh sports means to this region and, and how important it is. 
It, it is. And, uh, we, we lived away for 10 years when we lived in Detroit, and, you know, it, it's different. I mean, Pittsburgh is unique in the way the sports are taken here. Um, you know, I go back the Pirates, Bob Prince, the Steelers in the early, you know, in the 70s, I couldn't get tickets. I listened on the radio and watched on TV like, like the fans, the hockey, you know, the Penguins. I've been a Penguins ticket holder for a long time, and I enjoy that aspect of it because it, it's important to this region. And it's different. It really is. You travel around to different stadiums, uh, visit different colleges, just visiting different cities. It's not the same. Pittsburgh sports is unique, and it's a lot of fun. It's great to be part of it, as I'm sure you know. Well, we, we felt as we were always a part of it, and it's great to service the people because it meant so much to them. Now, you can tell me the truth now, and you won't hurt my feelings. But all those years, I told you who to draft. Did you ever once sit back and say, you know, that's not a bad idea. Or <clears throat> we would suggest things and say, those guys, yeah, they might have something there. Or you just go the remote. No, you know what? I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, it's in all sincerity. You do your homework. You know what is a good athlete, no matter what the sport. I mean, you do your homework. You understand. So, sure, I mean, I listen to different input because there might be a piece of information that I don't know. You may get to interview a kid um, that I never got to speak to on that level. You may know something about his family that I don't know. So I try to get as much information as possible, absolutely. I think it was you by Troy Polamalu, wasn't it? Oh, it was, yeah, by <laughs> all means, trade up 11 spots and uh, make sure you – and assign Willie Parker, whatever you do. So Steeler Nation, you're in big trouble. Kevin Colbert listens to me. Look out, that might be the last Super Bowl for a while. Kevin, you've always been a great friend of the show. You've always been there for us when we've asked you to. Uh, we hope we've treated you kindly and, and with the dignity you deserve. Thank you so much, and uh, nothing wrong with two in a row. No, hey, and on behalf of the Steel organization and, and Pittsburgh sports fans everywhere, not only in Pittsburgh, but as you know, they're, they're all around the world. I mean, I want to congratulate you on a great career, and I want to... You know, the, the dignity and the class and the, you know, just the professionalism you did your job with. We, we at the Pittsburgh Steelers and, and me as a Pittsburgher and fans everywhere surely appreciate it. Thank you, Kevin. That's very Thanks, kind man. of you. Thanks, Thanks very you. much. A delight to have Kevin Colbert, uh, the architect, one of the architects of the Pittsburgh Steelers, dare I say, dynasty. All right, we've got much more for you. Stay with us. All kinds of guests to show you. Frank Cooley is going to be here. Steve Peterson, the Pitt Athletic Director. Stay tuned. Much more on this final edition of Sportsbeat 2009. Hello, my name is Brian Aloff, and I've been a photographer here at Sportsbeat since 96. It's really tough to try to sum up the last 13 years here with the show. Uh, so many memories have happened for me, most of them behind the camera. Uh, there's times like when we were in spring training, we snuck into an exclusive resort and uh, played some pickup basketball with uh, Stan. And I remember Stan shouting, hey, pick and roll, pick and roll, and, and just pumping his fist after they scored some hoops. Just funny things behind the camera and away from the show that, that really stick in my memory. There's a time we were at Avalon Lakes LPGA tournament up in Warren, Ohio. And uh, we did the show on a Friday, and the next morning uh, we were leaving, and uh, Stan was early to the car. And when I came out in the morning, I said, you remind me of my dad always waiting at the car. He acted like he was insulted, but I think in kind of way he, uh, he enjoyed it. But uh, the biggest thing for me, sports beat, has been like a second family. You could always count on the people here uh, to have your back in good times and bad it was always fun to come to work. You knew when you were coming here, you were going to laugh a lot. There was always something going on. Uh, it's been it's been a good good 13 years. Um, so I just want to thank you for my time here and uh, love the show. Thanks, Brian. 13 years on July the 13th. There's some synergy there. Just to show you how big a night this is, to get Brian Anloff in a tie. Now you're talking about something special. Thank you, Brian. Love you too, man. I really do. You know, one of the staples of this program, of course, over the years has been the phone callers, but also the number of guests that we've had on. Uh, we prided ourselves on if there was a big story, we had the big guests. In fact, it got to a point where Sportsbeat elevated its status to a degree where people, if they had a story to get out, they wanted to come here. If it was a major story, Sportsbeat was the place you came. And this is just a list, or a partial list, of some of the great guests we've had over the last 18 years. From Cooperstown to KBL, 
long trip in a very short amount of time. Reggie Jackson, welcome to our program. It's an honor to have you here. Thanks, Dan. Can you possibly capsulize your emotions at the dais on that day? No, not really. Can you summarize them? Uh-uh. That, was it an emotional time for you? Was it so well thought out that uh, no. <laughs> you were prepared? No. Um, it, it's really difficult to, to describe. Two heavyweights in the building, and that's it. why they're on opposite ends, so they wouldn't tilt from one side to the other. Pitt was going to play in the Gator Bowl, and, oh. and uh, the team was quartered at the Plush Golf Resort, Ponte Vedra, uh, down in Jacksonville. And... Uh, and I was assigned to room with Bino, and I went out on a town, you see, with the boys. And Bino, as was his general practice, he would disappear and go to dinner and get scrambled eggs someplace and then turn in his well, expense account. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when I did pick up the dinner check, you still turned in for it. <laughs> no. It was oh, yes, you did. No. No. When, when, when he would put in, Frank Carver, his boss, used to laugh about it. He'd put in it. He took all the newspaper guys to steak dinner. Yeah. Uh, and, but, but anyhow, and then he would retire early, you see. There would only be two places I would have probably been happy coaching. One would have been the city of Pittsburgh, and one would have been the Giants, because I grew up being a Giants fan. I don't think there's a better city in the country than there is in, in the city of Pittsburgh, and it wouldn't be a better place to coach here. Than here, and I uh, one time in '68 or '69, Dan Rooney talked to me. In fact, right. when Noel got the, took the job, I I think I had a, a, I could have had the job if I wanted it. Pittsburgh's our home, and uh, you know, in 1969 when we came here, uh, there was no question about uh, the friendly people of Pittsburgh. Uh, there was no doubt in my mind that uh, uh, you know the ownership wanted a winner, the fans wanted a winner, uh, you know, and there was no reason why uh, we couldn't have one. Put yourself in a position where you don't beat yourself and expect to win each week as you go out there. So I think there's a very uh, fine line between winning and losing in the National Football League. I've been very busy, a lot of things to do, but, uh, you know, kind of living a dream every morning. I pinch myself, and uh, but it doesn't take long for me to get about the task at hand. I've got a lot of work to do on a daily basis, and uh, but I'm having fun. Although you've offered Vaughn some astronomical dollars here. I mean, but, you know, if he can make, from what I gather, if his agent can go over here and say, I can get you five million dollars more because I can put a million dollars more in my pocket why should you stay there you know and that's what that's what's happened now what made your camp believe that Tyson was beatable technically psychologically why did you think you could win well I didn't know the ability of James Douglas once I had been in the proper shape and was able to do everything that I was taught as a youngster um, then it was uh, inevitable for me to uh, do what I did. There's a book written on Lombardi that said when pride still mattered. And we played the game for pride because it certainly could have been for money. You'd have to be kidding me if you said it was for money. I didn't want a restaurant while I was playing because I didn't want it to suffer with the ups and downs of a, of a player. <laughs> and so I wanted to wait until I was done playing so that, you know, you're always one level once you retire. And so you can do nothing but get better because as you get older, the stories get, get better. And I can't understand, you know, guys telling me they get burned out. How could you get burned out doing something that you love to do? First of all, most important question, how are you feeling? I feel great. All checkups are good, and my, I just had my big physical, and uh, the good news is that they said I could keep on going. If you looked at us, our lineup over the years, we had some deuces. And when I say deuces, uh, some of them should have been locked up. <laughs> a real character. Oh, man, but I tell you what, come game time, I wanted him on my side. The bra thing, was there ever a time when you considered, nah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this? Well, no, because there was no thought about doing it. So it was really, uh, I mean, it was a spontaneous, there was no thought process about it whatsoever. It was, it just happened. I've been trying for almost 40 years to trip. tell people how I felt when I hit the home run. It's just a great feeling. It was a great feeling to beat the, beat the Yankees. The most famous face in Pittsburgh Steeler history, this of course is Steeler Hall of Famer, the cornerstone of the Steeler dynasty, Joe Green. Joe, great to see you. Great to see you in that black and gold and great to see you back at Latrobe. 
Thank you, Stan. Uh, Cornerstone, famous face. Well, it's good to be back and uh, sitting next to an old friend. What are your remembrances of the man? Well, Pete Rozelle was a real good friend. He was a, an excellent person. I never heard Pete Rozelle say anything that he didn't believe. We're joined now by the commissioner of the National Football League. Of course, that is Paul Tagliabue. And Paul, among the many duties you have to endure, I would imagine this, like this one, is uh, one of the more pleasant ones. Well, it sure is. It's not a duty. This is uh, an occasion that you wouldn't want to miss and uh, be up there with uh, Chuck Knoll and Bill Cowher and players like Franco Harris. In Russia, were you ever on a TV program like this? Have you ever been on live television before? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I've never been on a live TV, and um, I'm kind of uh, very, uh, very, you know, surprised and a uh, little bit nervous. A little <laughs> Calm down, it's fine. I mean, you built the most popular sport in the city. Well, I think at, at, at that time, you know, the, the steel industry was really taking a hit, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And, uh, and I think that people needed something to rally around, and I think, and I think that we... We did that for them. And he got a 10-minute standing ovation. That's right. right. You were worried about Every that. Every guy that comes in the first time back in the He's good, now. but he ain't no Bradshaw. You know, it's funny. I'm always saying things, and a lady gave me a letter today, and she really jumped me real bad about taking off on Steeler fans. And, and I guess I say this to the Steeler fans. I don't take off on you. There are a few people who write me who are pretty bad. And, I, and every time I get those letters... It reminds me of just the few who were real jerks. And so when I lash back, I lash at the jerks. They know who they are. 95% of the fans in Pittsburgh, I know, wanted me to do well. We hope to complete it before the end of the month. So that's where we're at. What do you hope to complete? The deal. Okay. A deal. When I was introduced to the weights and that, I started working out. And honest to gosh, I became addicted. I just uh, saw that there was going to be something positive about this. This is what the World Series ring looks like. Mm -hmm. One, of course, with the Florida Marlins in uh, 1997. They say, well, unless you win the World Series, uh, you're really not that good. And uh, I disagree with that because there's only one winner every year, and there's a lot of teams that perform very well this year that aren't going to get the big prize. Uh, they're professional, and I, I admire them. They come to the rink, and uh, a lot of times um, they put things aside, and uh, they're ready to play and perform. Uh, you know, you're in the performance business uh, because we're in the entertainment business. Uh. So the opportunity that I have in this position with this group of players, with this team, um, this close to being in a playoff, I think it's a great opportunity to have. And, I'll let the work and the players' uh, play speak for itself. I'm a, the center fielder, and uh, you know there there hasn't been any talk about playing playing any other position. And you know I've worked hard to to become a good center fielder, and, and that's where you know that's where I'm going to play. I never thought that uh, that 11 years would just you know pop up on me all of a sudden. It seems like it was just yesterday. Uh, you know I was a rookie coming into camp and really didn't know what was going on. We got you a Jerome Bettis Steeler jersey. Which camera you on? This one. So this is for you, and you can uh, slip that on uh, after you leave here. Okay. We wanted you to have that Thank and you. uh, your first piece of memorabilia here in, in Pittsburgh. Thanks very much. You are Appreciate very it. welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Sydney. Who's the greatest women's player of all time? Well, let's see. I think her name starts with an M. No, You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's close as well. I mean, Steffi Graf, it's nice to be in the same group of people. I think I was the, 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 the best one, but, uh, you know, what, what do you base it on? Did you hear Ben? Yeah, he got fired up. <laughs> that was the most emotion I ever seen him been. You know, I guess he was fed up. Um, he was tired of what was going on with the offensive crew. Uh, he started with himself, uh, me, myself, all the way down. So many people have talked about, you know, the only question on this offense is the offensive line. Uh, I think that drives them, and I'm glad because I know how good they're going to be. Uh, I've seen the hard work they've put in. Um, they're, they're listening to Coach Z and, and Bruce and the offense, and uh, they believe in what, what he's teaching them. How did rookie Bill Cowher do in his first year of broadcasting? <laughs> well, you know what? Bill was great. I mean, I really, uh, it was a pleasure for me to work with him all year, and he, uh, I had the uh, spit shield early because sometimes he gets <laughs> fired up and, you know, it's, things go different ways. The more people maybe recognizing, recognizing me around, but... Uh, you know, I think that's, that shows how, how much like, uh, Pittsburgh people like hockey, you know, how, they, how much they like it. And 
uh, it's great to see that there's so many fans out there. Well, I truly believe that, you know, but we're individuals. You know, as an individual, I should have that much respect for myself first before anything that I go into. These are the things that I would talk. These, this is how I was raised. Because of batting titles, basically, you know, my name is thrown up there with Ted Williams, this Dan Musial and Hannes Wagner, you know, all these great hitters. And I laugh because those guys were a different, completely different type of hitters than I was. I mean, they had the ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark, drive in the big run. And how closely are you able to follow the Panthers from down there in Dallas where you live? As, as, as close as I can. It's obviously not, not as close as, as, as if I were here, but uh, I, I play close attention to them. I, I try to pull them up on TV. You know, I got direct TV, so I try to get all the college games, all the pro games. But it, it's kind of hard to keep up when you're, when you're so far away. Did your experience as a player and what you've experienced in your life help you to persevere through this, as I said, torturous process? Yeah, there were some, uh, some tough times uh, throughout the uh, bankruptcy process, uh, having to deal with uh, a lot of different parties, with uh, the senior lenders, uh, of course, SMG and, and Fox. Um, but uh, I think at the end it was all worth it. Uh, there were some ups and downs, and I was always optimistic that uh, we could uh, pull it off and, and keep the Penguins here where they belong in Pittsburgh. And I'll let that be our legacy. I am so proud of that guest list, I can't tell you. We're going to add to that guest list when we come back. Ken Sawyer and Paul Steigerwald of the Pittsburgh Penguins and FSN. That's next here on this grand finale for Sports Beat 2009. You know how the story goes, Stan. All good things must come to an end sooner or later. Well, really want to congratulate you on some, uh, some great shows. Either uh, having me on your show or myself sitting on my couch with a cold beer watching your show. I really enjoyed it, man. So uh, I know I'll see you around. So just keep on keeping on and uh, all the best to you. Motown, a throw down, can't wait till he score a touchdown. Messing with the air, but bad so brown. This little jigs and your man is going down. Young. I'm not asking you to second guess them. I'm just wondering. I mean, is, is it worth that kind of commitment? Well, knowing what Mario's done here, if it was Mario Lemieux, certainly. But I'm not sure that it, Eric Lindros is Mario Lemieux. In my opinion, no. Uh, this guy. I know this is the biggest lie in captivity. <laughs> I tell the truth. I tell no lies. And I'm telling you, stand in God. The challenger is Renato Cornet. He uh, comes from New Zealand and also Australia. Aust uh, Australia. Yeah. Did you live in uh, New Zealand for a time? Never. Never? No. Okay, the accent threw me. Sorry about that, <laughs> Australia. Born in Canada, though? No, born in Croatia. You know what? You need to get your publicist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want the pick? Oh, I missed the president. I can't give you the pick early. Oh, Hillary wants the pick. Oh, that's different. She's impressed with my 3-0 and record. Mr. President, any time I can help, I'm willing to do it. Well, that pick, again, I had to give it to the president. What are you going to do? His wife wanted it. Don't forget, tomorrow at noon, it will be the Mike Tomlin press conference. Maybe not. Well, Maybe you know not. what, man? I love you. But I'm going to ease on in. Go Fuck ahead. I, go ahead. I don't blame you. I better, understand. Better I should go than you. See you. Oh, there's Roger Lenhart, our producer of 15 years, 15 of the 18, and I will tell you this much. There's Gina, and there's Richard Sutphin. Richard was with us for 15 years. By the way, our first photographer was Walt Francis, and Walt was part of the original, well, it's only one person, Matt and Gina. There's Lumpy. Yeah, I figured it would be empty by now, for <laughs> sure. But uh, Walt Francis was our initial photographer, then Richard joined us 15 years. You already, is that Brian back there? Yep, Brian is our... Uh, Sports beat historian, and he uh, does all the audio. When that thunderstorm hit, Bradshaw never ran faster on a football field than he ran that night. He left me high and not dry. I was soaked, and he was already in the tunnel. Now, we're joined now by the chief executive officer of the Pittsburgh Penguins and, of course, our longtime FSN play-by-play -play man, Paul Steigerwald. Gentlemen, welcome. Ken, you've been here about 10 years now, sure. and... Um, what a great time it is to be a Pittsburgh sports fan with, you know, all that's happened. And um, 
I guess we have to go back to the dark times to appreciate the good times. I guess that makes it even sweeter for you. Well, you know, I was just watching the um, graphic on the show here. It started in March of 1991, and that's pretty good timing in Penguin history. Two months later, we won the first cup, and we just won our third cup. And uh, this, uh, this well, show has responsible. Haven't this show figured has that out yet? Uh, covered that span and uh, some pretty high times <laughs> and a little trough in the middle there. Yeah, and we tried to make it up with some of the other teams. You know, I was going to ask that, Paul. Uh, Myron Cope once said to Guy Junker, he said, you know, when I started Myron on radio, the Steelers began to win. And all the talent as Myron was, he admitted that the Steelers, and then, so Myron said to Guy, back when Sportsbeat was really starting to gain some popularity, he said the same thing happened with you guys and the Penguins, because we were there for the first cup, the second cup, Mario, all those things, and no question, it propelled us. Well, you know, that's the beauty of it is that uh, not only do we get to enjoy the success of the hockey club when they win or the Steelers when they win, but you get to also enjoy some success along with it. It kind of carries you along. You get, you get to be on the train and, and, and take advantage of it. So, I mean, let's face it. You know, Mario Lemieux made my career, basically. That's how I look at it. The success of the Penguins is one of the reasons why I'm even sitting here right now. So I don't, I don't ever think that it's me, but it's nice to know that we have some affinity with, uh, with the success that's happened. Cannot look in the throw you a softball here looking for a bouquet because I know that, you know, if you're upset about something, you'll, you'll tell us. But, you know, we like to look at ourselves as a disseminator of information. Um, and we try to transmit the excitement to the fans. Now, better Sid and Gino do it than, than us, but we feel like we're a conduit to the fans, and I really think that's our function. Well, um, you know, in our case, we... Um over the last 10 years, we've had a, a lot of stuff to talk about that's been off the ice, and, uh, and now it's so great to have these great players to talk about what's on the ice. But we've, we've had for many years just be talking about survival and, and whether Penguins would be in Pittsburgh. And, and so it's, it's really great right now to be able to turn it back to the players to um, carry the, uh, the message. Stag, I remember something you said uh, when we had our final roundtable after the Penguins won the Cup, and you said, I'm just so happy that hockey not only survived, but is thriving on the city of Pittsburgh. Because I remember when we first met over 30 years ago, you were selling advertising at a radio station. I was working at one of my 14 or 15 radio stations that I worked at uh, in that time. And, and um, it was a struggle back then to get people interested in hockey. Well, well what I, I remember is that Stan Saverin was doing intermissions on Channel 53 WPGH back in those days uh, when the Penguins were being carried by that television station. So you were one of the first guys to do commentary or whatever we want to call it analysis between periods of hockey games way back then before I did so um, you're you're one of the pioneers in terms of hockey broadcasters in Pittsburgh but yeah I mean when we started uh, it was a passion that I had to be in hockey I wanted to do that from the time I was 14 years old and you know I, I was ahead of the curve I mean I think if I try to do that today the, the line would be about three miles long for people who would like to have my job or do what I do but fortunately I was into hockey at an early time in, in its history in Pittsburgh and I got I got a chance to take advantage of it as we both were mm -hmm. but I think as a result we have a real appreciation for you know the lineage and also just how difficult it is to to have a sport come into a city and 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 begin to build and it took a long time for it to reach the stage that it is now but uh, to me I, I would never say that hockey's as big as Steeler football in this town but it's, it's getting close it really is and and that parade I think was uh, was proof of that it's one of uh, you know our general manager Ted Black uh, and, and our uh, assistant GM, Sean McClintock, called me after I drove back from Detroit the next morning. I don't, um, no big-time fancy planes for me. We drove back, which was good. It savored the victory. They said, would you like to ride in the parade? And uh, there's Ted and Sean sitting there in the front row with Danny Potash, of course. And I first declined because I said, this is for the players. It, it's really not for me. Um, and then I thought about it, and I said, well, why not? If they want me to, it was one of the great thrills of my lifetime, and not because... I belonged in the parade, but just to see all the people and all the noise and all the passion, um, it made me proud to be a Pittsburgher, and I've always said this, um, I was born in Cleveland, but I lived my life in Pittsburgh, thankfully, knock on wood. So, Ken, thank you for coming in. Thank and on behalf of, of Penguin Nation, Pittsburgh Nation, as you know, we're seen all over the country, really all over the world. Thank you for all you've done and all the joy you've given all the people this season especially. Thank you. Well, I, I take that as a collective thanks to a lot of people in the organization, yep. but it's been great. I remember one time Stan said to me, um, he was talking about his talk show and what makes it go, and he said, I think, and it was, a, I think, an honest appraisal of, of why you, you're successful. 
you said that I validate people's opinions. When they call, they feel validated by just talking to me. I feel validated by being on this show, Stan, and, and being your friend all these years and, and, and a colleague. I really do. Thank you, Paul. It's thanks very great. much. It's very nice. Ken, thanks for coming in. I don't know, maybe most of the callers would feel violated by my opinions, <laughs> not validated, but thank you nonetheless. All right, when we come back, Ken's counterpart with the Pittsburgh Pirates, Frank Cooley, joins us next. Don't forget, we're going to reveal the true identity of Mr. Monday Night. And coming up a little bit later, hello, Chucky. A little bit later, wave to the crowd. There's Chucky Whitlock. Um, a little bit later, when Dave Rakini is producing this show. That's Dave. Hi, Dave. Had a boy, Dave. So far, anyway. Uh, we, uh, uh, yeah, uh, hurry up. Okay, I get that an awful lot. A guy, let me put it this way, a guy is going to be here a little bit later on. We'll be back in just a moment. Hey, Stan, it's Mike White from the Post-Gazette, and all I want to say is thanks for having me be a part of Sports Beat for all these years, just a little part. And you know what? Thanks to you for even though you were always with the Steelers, Pirates, Penguins, did a lot of big-time stuff, and you're a big-time guy, you were never too big to include high school sports as a part of Sports Beat. And to have me do segments and take your Sports Beat show on Thursday nights to games and to talk about high school sports. And you always did know a lot about high school sports. You used to surprise me. But that gave high school sports a, even more legitimacy around here because Stan Saverin made it a part of Sports Beat. So, Stan, thanks to you and thanks for always doing everything in a classy way. Hi everybody, my name is Brian Lasick. I'm an audio editor here at FSN Pittsburgh. I've worked here for 13 years now. Um, I've worked on Sportsbeat. Um, I started as an intern. I'm a lifetime Pittsburgher. Um, and you can imagine the treat it was to find out that you're going to be an intern with Stan and Guy on Sportsbeat and, you know, and being a, a Pittsburgh sports fan. Um, there's been so many memories over the years with these guys um, that I just can't think of one. Uh, on and off the camera, we've had so much fun over the years. It's been a blast. Um, but there is one piece of video that I keep remembering. Anytime I'm down, I always want to put this tape in because it always makes me chuckle. Um, it was a caller that kept calling Sportsbeat and demanding that Jose Chico Lean be a guest. Um, Stan and Guy kept you know, saying that they've had different parts over the years. Um, this guy kept insisting he wanted to see Chico, and then finally Guy had enough. Why don't they have Chico Lean? He's pushing him. Because he's in or Philadelphia. Because he's in Philadelphia and he plays a game every day of the week. No, and, I'm talking and about before they went to Philadelphia. They, they left. They, they, we can't have Chico Lee. We've had players on talking box after every game. No, you can't get him on before a game. The, are, the, are the premier players, like Dan Fly. You never had Rocco Mediate. You never had Chico on there. You never had Spanky on there. I mean, these are the guys, you know, the, the Rocco media. Why don't we have Rocco media on to promote the Pirates? And, and by the way, we did have Rocco media on. I don't know what he has to do with the Pirates, but we had him on. I'm what? We had Leland on. We had Drabic on. We had Bell on. If we you get on Sauer on, we had Ted Simmons on. Who, who do you Chico want? The, the clubhouse. Door? Chico, hey, Rocco. hey, Chico Rocco. Wolf, come on, because he doesn't speak English that well. He refuses to do television interviews. Okay. You want to sit, him, sit here and listen to him stutter and, and speak in broken Spanish, that's fine. He doesn't want to do it. That's All right, coming up now, coming up next is uh, our football prognosticator for college football. What are we having football? him on for? It's baseball season. Who? Fino. We shouldn't have him on. It's a pennant race. All right, Chico Lean's going to be on to pick this weekend's college game. Stay tuned for Chico. Well, there you have it. That's one of the classic clips here. We always watch it just for a good pick-me-up. Uh, Stan Guy, love the show. Stan, look forward to working with you here for many more years to come. Thank you, Brian. And Brian is our historian. He knows where every piece of tape is, which, of course, is dangerous, too, because he knows where all the, the, the bad stuff is. Joining us now, the president of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Frank Coonley. Frank, welcome in. Uh, you're just part of our star-studded cast tonight. You've only been in Pittsburgh a couple of years, but I would imagine it hasn't taken you long to kind of get what this is all about. No, not at all, Stan. I, I remember listening to you and watching you when you did Penn State football games many years ago. And I, obviously, as a Penn State alum, followed the Penn State Nittany Lions pretty closely and used to enjoy your broadcast. And Pittsburgh is really fortunate to have several great sports institutions. And, Stan, I've come to, come to know and understand that you're one of the great sports institutions here in Pittsburgh. And not only do I want to congratulate you for the great 17 years that you've had, and I, I know Sports Beat has been on air 
for 18 years, but for such a great run with Sports Beat and bringing the headlines of Pittsburgh sports to the all of our fans, Penguins, Steelers, Pirates fans, but also for staying on with FSN. I was so thrilled to hear that you're going to stay on and this isn't going to be your last show and that you're particularly going to be continuing to follow all that happens in sports in Pittsburgh, including the Pirates. Oh, thank you, Frank. That's very nice of you to say. Um, a lot of people might think I'm a Pittsburgh institution. Most people think I belong in one, uh, <laughs> that I belong. I, I, I asked this of Kevin Colbert, and I, I ask it kiddingly. Um, on the occasion you have to watch the show, or maybe you're just peeking in what we're doing over at PNC Park, do you listen to what the fans have to say in, in, when they call in a show like this or some of the guests we have or even something that one of the hosts might say in terms of suggestions for the Pirates? Oh, absolutely. And, in fact, from that clip that you just ran, I think that fan has called me a couple of times as well. Um, but, yes, it's, it's... Starting at second base, Chico Lean. That'll be Friday you night's us, lineup. You wanted us to bring back Chico, Chico Lean. Lean. Absolutely. You wanted to know why we didn't have him playing second base. Uh, but, absolutely, I, I, every chance I can. I, oftentimes it's right before a game and I have some things going on. But it's important to know what the fans are thinking and what the fans, uh, certainly many of them email me and write me and, and grab me at the ballpark, but not all of them have the opportunity to do that. So the opportunity to hear them and they give it to you straight and I hear it and uh, it allows us to know what our fans are thinking. I think that's valuable for, for all parties. Uh, Frank, they're giving me the rush up as they usually do. I talk too much, but I wanted to thank you for taking the time and, and coming in and um, uh, I'll be there Friday night before the Giants come well, to town. Well, so glad, Stan, and I have a present for you if we have oh, time to, uh, hopefully we have time to give you a Pirates Bucko jersey with uh, Saverin, number 18 on. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. Oh, that's, that is great. Frank, thank you so much. Stan, thank you for doing what you do. Oh, thank you. It's, believe me, it's, it's a labor of love, to say the least. Frank Coonley, president of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and coming up next, the president of the Joe Paterno Fan Club. Defensive coordinator Tom Bradley joins us next. There's Ray in the back. He has to put up with me every afternoon. And Freddie Ryan, one of our photographers, and also works in the studio as well. We'll be back. Coming up, Tom Bradley is coming up next on Sportsbeat. Hey, Stan. Thomas James from Jerome Bettis Grill 36. Wanted to let you know that we love the show for 18 years. We'll always have a table here at Jerome Bettis. Come and see us. Hi, Stan. It's your friend Jerry Dulac from the Post-Gazette. And all I can say is I really enjoyed our conversation all those years on Sportsbeat, all the talkbacks from the U.S. Open and the Masters. And I think our greatest, uh, my greatest accomplishment was getting you to be a golf fan. See you, Stan. That is a pretty big accomplishment. But Jerry taught me a lot about golf. And, of course, he's an outstanding golfer and golf writer. Another great golfer right here, <laughs> although apparently I'm surprised you showed up with a suit after what you told me about your game today. Um, but Tom Bradley, uh, Penn State defensive coordinator. Tommy, it's so nice of you to come in. When I first got hooked up with Penn State, the first time around the highlight show, Ray Scott was still doing it, and I would do a scouting report. I think, if not mistaken, you were still playing because that was 1938. No, you, no, it was, no? You, no. Oh, it was a little bit later than that? A little bit later than that. Frank's shown his age, but I remember when you did the, 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 the sports show for us. Yeah, back in the yeah, early, early 80s. But I always, I always told Joe, the five years I did it, you won national championships in 82 and 86. Is that why he wants to bring you back? No, he doesn't want to bring me back. I keep telling him that's the only thing that's, the only thing that's missing. Um, I've been here a very long time. I've been here nearly half of my professional life. Uh, you've been there your entire professional life. You just keep on keeping on? You know, it's, it's interesting. They talk about how many wins Coach has, and, and I tell him all the time, if I didn't play there and coach her, he'd have the record by a wide margin right now. <laughs> you know, so, heck, it's, uh, it's been enjoyable, and I've enjoyed all the years being there. You know, there is a tremendous uh, Pittsburgh influence up at State College. A lot of kids go there, and I know uh, we get an awful lot of uh, emails and phone calls from people in State College because we're on the basic cable system up there. Yeah, it's interesting. Frank was talking about his emails he gets. I'd like him to maybe answer some of my emails I get after some <laughs> games, especially after the USC game. He can, he can answer all every one of those. You know, a lot of people say that they stay in touch with Pittsburgh sports. I know, of course, your brother is the orthopedic surgeon for the Steelers, and you're a big Pittsburgh sports fan, a Johnstown guy. Uh, did you ever tune into sports beat just to, out of season just to see what was going on? You know, it's interesting. We always do. We watch it all the time. It's interesting to see the guests you have on, and, uh, you know, we follow it, of course, because it's a local show. You know, it's a local flavor with Pittsburgh, and that's why we followed up at Penn State. 
And are you going to give my brother a promo here now? Is that what we're doing here? Well, I got to give a he shot. He has enough business. You he know doesn't what? need more business. I'm over the back surgeries, but if the knee goes, I want to be in good, uh, good shape with your, your brother, Jim. Um, just give us kind of a purview, if you will, of what you expect uh, for this year's team. A great season in 2008. Yeah, we have a great season. We've got a good nucleus coming back. I'm often asked we're in Pittsburgh. Sean Lee is back. You know, Sean will be back. And that's a great addition to our team, not only because of the talent, but also because of leadership skills he does possess. And uh, I think we're going to, you know, we we got to get out of the gate quickly. Uh, we've got our first four games at home, and they're going to be important to us. We've got some guys that are young and, and youth in positions where we've got to get experience and get them going quickly because we hit that Big Ten schedule you know, right off the get-go with Iowa. All right, Tommy. Well, I appreciate you coming in after a rigorous and difficult that round of golf. That was 27 holes out there 27 today. Holes, 27 holes, and you're still holes. walking. It's such an athlete to play golf <laughs> like you do. We appreciate the time. And I, over all the years, all the times you've come on, we had the hookup with the camera up at State College, a Friday scouting report. You've been a great friend of this show, and we, we appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. All right, when do we come back? All they're telling me is it's a mystery guest. I have no idea who's coming up next which generally is the case, but this time I really don't know. Back with more on this Sports Beat finale next. Stan, thanks for 18 years of wonderful memories. Love the show. Love the show, Stan. Hey, Stan, it's Pat Paris in St. Louis. I just want to say, while I'm sad to hear that Sportsbeat is going away, I want to congratulate you on the 18-year run of Sportsbeat. Some of my greatest memories were being next to you on the Sportsbeat set, answering questions from the callers, and uh, some of my other favorite memories is just working with you, covering so many great events throughout the years. Congratulations. Unfortunately, it's coming to an end. Best of luck to you, Stan. Best of luck to everybody at FSN Pittsburgh. Thank you, Pat. Uh, valued colleague for a number of years uh, when he was with us here at FSN Pittsburgh. I also want to give a shout out. If I, there's Cliff Wincoop. Cliff is one of our photographers. He's a multitasker, does all kinds of things. And you can see when there's heavy things to be lifted, he's, he's the one we go to because he's a strong as bull, as they say. I also want to give a, a shout out to um, Patty Bell, who's doing, uh, has done makeup for us for years. Um, and believe me, that talk about heavy lifting. She's here to do makeup tonight. I hope she's getting paid double time to do this. Patty, thank you. Thanks for coming down. Appreciate that. There she is. Wave to the crowd. There she is. All right. Thank you very much. All right. We've got a mystery guest here. Um, and just let me bring him or her in. Hello, mystery guest. Well, first, it's water Cronkite retires. <laughs> Johnny Carson retires. <laughs> And Jerry Seinfeld, but at least you're not going to jail. <laughs> yeah, well, I, maybe I, not tonight, Bino, but there's always next week. Well, I mean, I just can't believe that, that, that we won't have sports beat, but I, I know these things happen. And, Stan, uh, you came to Pittsburgh from Orlando. The IQ of both cities went down, but that's another story. <laughs> but, again, uh, you had a great run. Uh, it's, this is a, you know, sports beat became uh, a very important part of the sports scene in, in Pittsburgh, and I hate to see it go. And, uh, but I'm grateful that you're still going to be here uh, on radio, and, you, and you're going to be doing, I understand, still some stuff for FSN. And for that, we, we're not getting the whole cake, but we're getting something. And well, remember what Bogart told Bergman. We also have Paris. We had you for 18 years. That ought to be pretty much enough, and they never sent me to Paris once to cover uh, anything. i got to say this, too, Bino, without getting into a mutual admiration society. Bino was a weekly guest um, virtually all year round on Sportsbeat. And, Bino, when we were kind of struggling to get legs, the mere fact that the great Bino Cook was on our show every week gave us tremendous credibility and one of the reasons that people started to watch. Well, I, I, I did win him over when I signed the Victors. Do we you have know, that on tape, Brian Lasick? Bino lost a bet. What was the bet, Bino? I don't remember what it was. I think it was a Michigan-Penn State game. And I said Michigan win, I think. It was, you know, it was, that was a long time ago. And by the way, Bino, you sang the Victors, the Michigan fight song, and clearly, in 18 years, it was the worst rendition yeah. of the Victors that anyone has ever heard. Bino, I appreciate you taking time to give us a call. You're the mystery guest, but it's no mystery. You're a great friend. Okay. We will see you around, Stan. At least you're not leaving Pittsburgh. And again, 
This is a sad day for sports fans in Pittsburgh. That's all I can say. All right, Bino, thank you very much. Okay. And it's always great to talk to Bino. He was um, an integral part um, of a number of shows that we did with Bino, football and otherwise. We've got so much more for you. We're going to close tonight's show with a special comment there. I hope it's special anyway. It was special to me. Uh, It meant a great deal. I hope you'll enjoy it toward the end of the show. Again, I mentioned a special guy is going to be on with us. We've got much more for you. Stay with us. This is the finale. This is it. Sports Beat signs off after tonight. Stay with us. Thanks, Dan, for 18 years. Love the show. Still to come, we'll reveal the true identity of the fabulous Mr. Monday Night, who's been with us for all 18 years. He got 17 picks right in those 18 years, but we'll reveal his true identity, and then we'll give him a head start as he runs for the county line. Also, Tunch Yoken. A partner of mine over all the years. Tunch will join us as well. We've got another special guest. Uh, you know, phone calls were a big part of this program, and we would be remiss if we didn't include some of our phone caller guests in this, indeed, the final show of Sports Beat. So, uh, good evening. You are on the air. Welcome to Sports Beat. Stan, first off, love the show. Scorekeeper here. Scorekeeper, I am thrilled to death that you're here. It's an honor, Stan. For old time's sake, i got to say it's Stan Guy. Love the show. Thank you very much. Stan, i got to tell you, I've recorded all 4,700 episodes. <laughs> I'm going to start playing them tomorrow. I'm in denial that you're going away. I'm just going to play them tomorrow. I'm going to start and play them for the next 18 years. I figure you'll have three more new shows by then, and I'll start playing them. A lifetime of Stan Saverin. Whoa, that's that's a sentence in hell, isn't it? Stan, quick question. Is it true uh, through the last 18 years that Bino Cook beat you in a 40-yard dash on three separate occasions? <laughs> it was only twice, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and the truth is, Guy and I never liked each other. Hey, hey Stan, I, I got to tell you, uh, uh, you know, Jimmy, congratulations, man, on... What a great run on sports beat. And this is the one time you ever catch me serious. I got to tell you, you and Guy were great, man. You, you were great as, doing it uh, by yourself. And I got to tell you, you are truly a Pittsburgh treasure, man. It's an honor to be your friend. It really is. I mean, fortunate. We're fortunate here at Pittsburgh sports fans. You know, and, and a kid like me who grew up in Pittsburgh, it, it was fortunate to have like a major league, really a national talent like yourself. Dedicate your professional life to Pittsburgh, man. I'm just looking forward to watching you for many more years, buddy. Really am. Well, thank you, Jim. And just to hold on for just a second, Jim Crenn, of course, the DV Morning Show. And Jim, Scott Paulson, now Randy Ballman, they were a big part of our success uh, to get us going because it was Jimmy Crenn as the scorekeeper who coined the phrase, First off, Stan Guy loved the show. And that became our catchphrase. They heard that and said, that works. And we began to advertise. That's what you saw on billboards and bus boards. And it was Jim Crenn and, and Scott Paulson and, and Randy Bauman who continued that character. And seriously, Jim, that gave us a hook and our association with DVE. You guys were incredibly instrumental in getting us up and running and kind of keeping us afloat. Well, Stan, I, I got to tell you, you know, you, you and Guy are definitely part of the foundation for the, the success that we've had on the morning show. And I think the reason that that uh, caught on, because as a comedian, you're always, you always wonder why a certain catchphrase catches on. But I think it's because people knew in their heart of hearts when I say, love the show, guess what? I really mean it. I love the show. <laughs> well, I know, you, I know you guys actually watched, which tells us there was a gaping void in your lives. But right. nevertheless... Jimmy, thanks for all you've done for Sportsbeat. On behalf of all of us here, we appreciate it, and you're a true treasure and a true friend. Uh, It's an honor to be a friend, Stan. On behalf of Randall, myself, and everyone at WDVE, man, we thank you. And like I said, looking forward to watching you uh, for many more years on FSN, buddy. I'll be around. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, buddy. All right, Jimmy Cran of the DVE Morning Show. We've got so much more for you. Again, my closing commentary will reveal the true identity of Mr. Monday Night and Tunch Yolkin, minus the Tunch I don't know. Maybe we will have the Tunch I don't know. All kinds of surprises. We'll be back right after this. Stan, Curtis Aiken. Just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure working with you. You know, when I first started working here, all the producers and the management team here tried to beat in my head that it wasn't called the Stan Saverin Show, that it was Saverin on Sports Beat. You know, I never bought into that because I understood 
that it wouldn't have been a sports beat without Stan Saverin. And I just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure working with you and uh, looking forward to seeing you in the future. Good luck. This is Mike Wagner from the Steelers. Hey, Stan, no more sports beats with Stan Saverin. Going to miss you. Good luck to you. We'll see you around. Let's go play golf. Number 23, Mike Wagner, and he's a Pittsburgh icon. Here's another one. Dave Wanstead, of course, Baldwin High School, University of Pittsburgh, and now the head football coach at the University of Pittsburgh. Dave, how are you? Thanks so much for calling in tonight. Well, Stan, how are you doing? I'm doing okay for an old guy. How about you? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, when we, we talk about the great sports tradition in the city of Pittsburgh, it, it cannot and does not and will not be talked about without mentioning and talking about Stan Saverin. I mean, it's uh, uh, you are a legend. There's no question about it. And I don't talk to many. I'm down here in Naples, Florida, taking a little break and and. Other than a recruit that might call me and say he wants to come to Pitt, I'm not talking to very many people. So you know how special you are to, to me. I appreciate what you do into our program and the city, and, uh, and we thank you. We really do. You've always been uh, very honest and a, and a great supporter and uh, a very intelligent uh, sportsman, and, uh, and I really appreciate that, and, and I just wanted to call and, and let you know. Well, Dave, I really appreciate that. I know you are uh, on vacation, and um, to take time out and call, it's, it's a great honor, and it's a great thrill. And it's always good to have Pittsburgh people occupying Pittsburgh positions. And I, for one, and obviously a lot of people, were just delighted when you got the job at Pitt. Well, I, I appreciate that, and, uh, and we're, uh, you know, we're looking forward to getting started. And I'm looking forward, once I get back there, we'll sit down and have a little lunch and uh, – Rehash sometimes, but uh, again, I just wanted to take the time and uh, call and, and recognize the, the fantastic uh, contribution that you've made to, to the city and, and to the University of Pittsburgh, and, and want to thank you personally. All right, Dave. Well, I appreciate the call. Thank you so much, and I look forward to getting together with you when you get back in town. Thanks again. Okay, Stan. Sounds good. All right. And we talk about partners, and I've had a few, and uh, one guy who's been a partner on Mondays, and especially Mondays, and without the Tunch of Straighter Net, of course, <laughs> is Tunch Oaken. Tunch, great to see you. Thanks for coming Man, in. Man, well, congratulations, Dan. That is, this is crap. I've been loving this show, just sitting here watching all your guests and calls. It's been fantastic. We have always tried to nail down how long we yes. started um, doing right. the Monday shows uh, with the Tunch of Straighter. That's a fairly recent addition. But yes, yes. we go back, what, 10, 12 years that you've been doing yeah, this? Yeah, I'm thinking 97 is when we started working together. And it didn't, you know, it just dawned on me as I was going, wow, I've been hanging out with Stan an awful long time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's been great, Stan. I, you know, people always ask me what it's like working uh, with you and, you know, the uh, sports icon that you are. And I always tell them, you know, the thing that I love about Stan is everything he says, every comment that he makes, every analysis that he gives, he thinks it through. I said, even when I don't necessarily agree with what he's saying, I know that he's taken a great deal of thought and uh, there's been a, just a whole process. So, you know, congratulations on 18 fantastic years and you are a great and uh, ask the best questions out of any interview I've ever seen. Oh, thank you, Tunch. Thanks very much. You know, the, the, the thing uh, that I think set us apart, especially on the Monday shows, is that I, I say we, you, gave analysis and an inside look to the game that people couldn't get anywhere else, certainly not locally. And as you know, I, I don't, calling myself a student of the game would indicate that I know something about it. I don't mean to say that at all, but I'm interested. I'm, I'm anxious to learn. Right. And I think a lot of people were like that, and you showed a lot of people a side of the game that they hear about but n never really get the opportunity right. to understand when you would draw on the telestrator. Either that or you got a crayon fetish. Right. I, I, was never, <laughs> like, I, I was so bad at coloring in art when I was a kid, so this is, for me, it's like kind of reliving my childhood. No, the other thing, too, i got to thank you for is because you – you know, I dress a little bit, but Sharon always goes, you have to dress nicer than that. Because Stan <laughs> always looks uh, great on that show. But, yeah, it's been great. Well, you know, one of the things you've, you've mentioned when you go on the road with the Steelers for the radio broadcast, right. no matter where you go, and, of course, Steeler Nation is, is everywhere, right. and this show is seen all over the country, you'd get off a plane in Kansas City or wherever crazy, in San crazy. Diego, and where's the Tunch of Strader? Absolutely. And I know you coined that. I mean, I, you coined that One of our phrase. viewers did. Tom uh, right, Kramer that's from right, Harrisburg. Tom 
Thomas Kramer coined yeah, that. Yeah, everywhere I go, it's unbelievable. People, you know, even uh, during the Super Bowl pregame, I'm walking around. I don't know, maybe maybe a hundred people said, "Touch, where's the where's the touch of straighter? Where's Stan?" And uh, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun doing this together. I really, I mean, I've so enjoyed it, Stan. If you give, have given me an opportunity on this show um, to to diagram what I love about the sport, you know, the uh, uh, the schemes and the big plays and why they work and why they don't, and it's just been uh, it's been such a blessing. It's been so much fun well it's been great we had a lot of uh, big games and two yeah, Super Bowl victories have, and yeah. a lot of good stuff thank you so much for what you've done for us over the years and more importantly you've been a great friend well, thank you Tunch. god bless you and we're still neighbors uh, yeah, absolutely that's right well, don't that's tell right. anyone else yeah. because there'll be a torchlight that's parade right. to get me out of the neighborhood <laughs> anytime soon you're not done yet yeah. you're not done yet right, because we are now going to reveal yes the true I identity of mr Mo people have been after him for years after right. some of those picks yeah now you get the, do it right now? The, you get the I, do I, you know what? I, this you is an honor unmasking. and a privilege. You know, I've had so much fun. And now... Don't put your hands around his I've, neck. I've been dying to see who this guy is. <laughs> Mr. Monday Night, it is about time. It's time. Face your public. Oh, oh, that's what he really looks like? Oh, no. That's what he really looks like. Oh, isn't that a shame? Is there a dermatologist in the house? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Am I supposed to take a break here? I'm overwhelmed with emotion. Mr. Monday Night, my apologies to your wife. All right, thank you. That's what he actually looks like, folks. We did the best we could. You're on your own picking Monday Night Football from this point forward. Our guest now is the athletic director of the University of Pittsburgh, Steve Peterson, who's been kind enough to come on the show. We just talked to Dave Wanstead. Steve, thanks for coming in. Oh, Stan, it's great to be here. It's, a, it's really an honor for us to be here and, and be part of this celebration of what you've accomplished for so many years with the show. Did you miss me while you went back to Nebraska? That's the key. <laughs> yeah, that, is that why you came yeah, back? I can't get one, It was guy. Ba basically the main reason. And, uh, and so now we'll have to adjust a little bit here, you know. But, uh, but we do have a couple of things for you. Oh, my. First of all, in commemoration of 18 years of this show, we've got a little football oh, jersey for wonderful. you. Thank you. With uh, your name and, and number. And then... Uh, I better check the size. <laughs> These are for 19-year-old kids. That is great. And, and you hold I, this up. Which camera? Three? There you go. I can count to three. If they ever put a fourth camera in here, I'm dead. <laughs> and you were also a part of something special, which is the first time ever that a, um, a Pitt basketball team became number one in the country as you covered them throughout the winter. And so we've got a number one basketball oh, jersey Steve. as well. Thank you so much. I, I will cherish this. This is a, a tremendous honor. You've always been so kind to me, you and uh, all the coaches out there. And I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention E.J. E. Borghetti, who's the director of uh, public relations, has just been uh, a good friend. And uh, I can't tell you how much it means for you to stop in and spend some time with us. Yeah. Well, we, is, this, is a, this has been a tremendous show, obviously, with you as a leader. And you know you've got so many great people behind this who have worked so hard. And, and uh, so I'm sure that in a lot of ways, this is a bittersweet day for them, but, uh, but we know that we work with all these great professionals and are going to get to continue to do that, and we're thrilled about that. Steve, thank you again so much, and thanks for the gifts. I will cherish these. I'm no. going to have to get – I don't know how to hang pictures. Anybody here help me hang pictures? I'll get them framed, but uh, you don't want me anywhere near a hammer or a nail. Steve, thank you so much. Great. Great. All right, we've had a lot of great guys on the show tonight, but the greatest guy of all will join me next on Sportsbeat. Hey, Stan, congratulations on a great run. Uh, you did a great job for the city. You're a great sports reporter. We're going to miss you. Uh, we appreciate the business you've helped us with Small Must Retail. Your advertising has really helped our business. The Cohen family has been friends with you since 1975. We appreciate your friendship. We wish you a lot of luck in the future. Thanks again. Stay well. Well, I was a Johnny come lately to this program because it was already up and running for just about a year when I joined and my longtime partner and dear lifelong friend Guy Junker joins us now. I am so... I knew the place would go to hell once I left. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just took him a long time to get me. That's all. A long time to find me. I, I am so delighted that you, know, you were able to come. We want to thank Guy, of course, now is the main sports anchor at Channel 4. I'm so delighted that they made the right decision 
Um, I was so happy when that happened, as you know, and I don't know why I'm so delighted to see you. I have to stare at you three hours every day on radio, but I, I, I just I told everybody last week that it just wouldn't be right if you weren't here. Yeah, this would have been, a couple of people said it was going to be tough. If I didn't see you every day now, it would have been very tough, but I'm tickled to death that we're working together again and that, uh, that I'm working back at Channel 4 and that, that things have worked out. I'm glad you're staying on here because uh, we need your insight on the Penguins and Pirates as well, even if it's in a little different forum from here on out. As you go back, Guy, uh, we have been reminiscing here. I, I imagine you've seen some of the show. I know you were busy doing the 6 o'clock news. Uh, there are so many shows and uh, things that we did. We've talked about this on radio. Uh, the ugly tie contest. You're not wearing one tonight, I'm glad to see. I finally <laughs> talked some fashion sense into this guy. But I'm wondering, you know, what, what strikes you as the things that you'll remember the most of? Uh, we, we figured it out. And i got to tell you this much. Guy was the arbiter of sports beat history. Brian Lasik was the historian, but you were the arbiter of history. Guy kept track of every single show, what day it was, who was on, what we talked about, and everything until the computer blew up, didn't it? Yeah, that, yeah we lost track of that, but Brian's done a fantastic job. You have a great archive system here. I've been enjoying watching everything. Without The porch tours, to me, Stan, were the, the most fun thing we ever did, and, and our former producer, God rest his soul, George Pryor, came up Gone with the now. idea. And I got Thank a, God you said that, because we wanted to get this in the show, and we had to save it for oh, B-roll. Oh, there you so go. Thank okay. God you, you brought that up. Matt Williams but just Matt bought Williams. that. Denny Nagel, look at him. But, you know, showing up at people's houses and, 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 and having cookouts and talking about sports, it's, it's, it's so Pittsburgh. I mean, uh, and when our producer came up with the idea, I remember I rolled my eyes and thought, this is never going to work. You're going to tear people's houses up and run wires and cables. And those were a lot. I still have that shirt, by the way. It's a little, it shrunk a little since then. But. The biggest rat pack who ever lived. He, he, he still has his first communion money. Hey, when I got fired from here, it took me two days to move out. <laughs> you, you can't do one of those, put your stuff in a box and leave. I had to hire a truck to come in and get all my books and everything. But That was the first porch tour, the one in Baldwin. Or no, no, that was the second one, Green Tree. Was Green the first Tree one was we did. the first one, and, and the guy with the one leg jumped in the pool with his prosthesis off, if you recall, and, yes, he did. and swam behind us with one leg. And we didn't know it because we only had one camera, and the camera was positioned on us, and the guy, he had a, you know, a, a prosthetic on, but then... He knew enough to get in between us, and he was on a slide going to a swimming pool, and he made this big show of unscrewing his prosthetic and putting it on, and, it's, and it's waving his stump in the air as he slid he down was, the pool. Yeah. We had no idea until the show was over. We had had a couple before that uh, part started. And the other, you know, the other thing is, too, Stan, when we started this show, newspaper guys didn't go on radio and TV shows. And, and guys like us didn't write newspaper columns. And I think, to some extent, a lot of the guys that we would ask to be guests early on would have to get permission from the press at the time or the post gazette or the trib or the beaver county times and and i think we had a lot to do with sort of the homogenization of the media in the city now we all you know ed bouchette's on tv and radio you and i had our columns and we all sort of be and, and i think that was part and parcel of what we were able to accomplish on this show you know something else guy too that we haven't mentioned here tonight when i joined the show which was late february of nineteen ninety two the newspapers went on strike and the Post-Gazette and the late Pittsburgh Press did not publish. And so there was no all-sports radio back in those days. There was the Myron Cope show, and I had had a show uh, after Myron, but there was nowhere to go. And One so, of many you've had canceled. Well, exactly, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> pretty soon I'm going to have to take off my shoes to count how many. Yeah, I'm the kiss of death. But I, I really think because th there were no newspapers, people came to us, especially because the Penguins were so hot. Yeah, there were no newspapers when the Penguins won their second Stanley Cup. And I remember when we had Myron Cope on after he announced his retirement, and he said, you guys were lucky in the same way he was when he first started doing the Steeler games. They get hot. They win four Super Bowls in six years, and he becomes a household name. I don't, I don't put myself on the same plane as Myron Cope, but we were lucky in that the Penguins got hot, and, and there were a lot of uh, people that weren't hardcore hockey fans, and you and I had loved hockey, I, me since the Hornets, you since the, the Barons and everything else, and we helped explain the game, I think, to a lot of young fans at the time, and I think it really helped doing hockey hotline after the games, talking bucks after the baseball games to help promote our own show, and it all worked together real well. I know they're squeezing me on time, uh, but I, I want to say this. Uh, people don't understand how not that we're looking for a pat on the back, 
this was a true labor of love. If people have any idea how much time we spent thinking about the show, worrying about the show, doing things for the show. It was just our little, you know, mad group of five or six back there putting the thing on every night. Trying to beat each other to the bank on Friday because the <laughs> last person there to check didn't carry. So, yeah, that's, that was, I love you, Stan. I, the, love the, you best, the best years of my life. Uh, I hope both of us uh, have many more, and uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that we're back on radio together. Well, I am, too. You shook hands too early. Now you tell me we've got two and a half minutes left. Oh, okay. Let's tell so, another story, then. Not much has changed in 18 years. The producing still leaves a lot to be desired. Either that or I don't hear uh, as well. One of the shows that I will always remember, and we showed a, a, a little bit of a clip of it, the Francisco Cabrera night when the yeah. Braves beat the Pirates, and we literally served as a psychiatric room for people calling up. I think it was therapeutic for both of us, yeah. too. I mean, we were going to be doing sports beat from Toronto. My wife still tells me that is the only time she has ever seen me speechless. I don't think I talked for an hour and a half. Uh, the, the David Volick uh, game was similar to that. Not quite as crushing. I mean, the Pirates have not had a winning season since that play. I mean, uh, how long ago uh, and how terrible that was. But I think People think we were good for them. I think they were good for us. We needed to talk about it as much as, as everyone else did. I'm always amazed when I think back, at, uh, and it didn't take all that long how quickly the show took off. And it actually became, as Bino said earlier, that's where people went, not to get sports information, but the people in the sports business watched, and when they wanted a story out, they, they called us and said, can we come on the show? Well, I don't know if the show would have lasted had we not had the trade with Pittsburgh Limousine when it started. Because everybody was like, what? what's the name of the show? Who's on it? Well, we have a limousine we'll send to pick you up. Okay, you can have it for the rest of the night. Take your wife out to dinner. And we got a lot of those, those guests that you showed early on because we sent a limousine to pick them up. Is there any show that sticks out in your mind as we, we say goodnight? I would have said to Francisco Cabrera, I mean, you know, the ones that uh, I really enjoyed when we went to the Super Bowl. Joe Namath did almost a whole hour with us, yeah. Super Bowl 30, when the Steelers lost to the Cowboys. That was a very fun week out there. I'll, I'll, spring training was always the most fun. I mean, to get out of Pittsburgh in February or March and uh, all the haunts that we uh, fr frequented over the years down in the Bradenton, Anna Marie to, Island area. We had to stay, we had to stay. Room together one year. Oh, that yeah, on a tight budget. Stan in his boxer shorts is not a pretty sight then <laughs> or now. But uh, you should be very thankful for the boxer shorts. <laughs> That's right. Count your blessings. <laughs> That's right. We were both uh, we had both just gotten engaged that year, both so I would leave the room so Stan could call his fiance and. Well, we all know how first, that worked uh, out. So. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's one of the shows I was talking about that got canceled, by the way. You probably should have stayed in the room. Uh, I am so proud of you. Uh, I'm so proud of you. I know you always look at me like this, you know, old grandpa and, you know, this mentor. And if that's the way. Older brother, maybe. Oh, all right. Well, I'm, I'm proud to be that. I'm so thrilled for your success. And thank you for coming in. Thanks to the folks at Channel 4 for allowing Guy to come in. It wouldn't have been a show without you. You're not going to get all choked up again, are you? Yeah. Ah, you know me. Ah. <laughs> Thanks. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, I've got a commentary coming up. I admit it. I taped it in advance so that I wouldn't get the way I'm about to get. We'll be back with more right after this. You messed up my hair. I suspected there would come a day when I would have to say goodbye to you, either because I had had enough or because you had had enough of me. But never in my wildest dreams did I imagine I would be saying goodbye to this show. There was a quote in the press release, Sportsbeat is Stan, but Stan is not Sportsbeat. I took the meaning, but it's not entirely accurate. Because Sportsbeat is, or should I say, was me. For me, it lived and breathed and provided joy and lifted spirits with a spirit of its own. For nearly 18 years, it was my life. It was me. It was in very large part who I am. Maybe that's a bit shallow, but I have no regrets. I don't regret the days of hard scrabble sets and resources and personnel and revenue streams. It wasn't like today when the last show was predetermined. Back in the early days, the last show might have been any day you walked into the studio. To watch it and survive it and grow into being the signature show not only of this network, but one of the most important shows of more than one generation of sports fans fills me with a soaring and enduring pride. Thanks for making it so. I hope it was evident to you, the viewer, the painstaking effort we put into producing a nightly show that you might enjoy and of which we could be proud. Our band of brothers, 
Guy and Matt and Gina and Roger. This show was our world. We realized it wasn't 60 Minutes, but it was to us. It was suggested to me that we treat tonight as a celebration of sports speak. I can't do that entirely. I look at it more like an Irish wake. We celebrate, but the underlying theme is that we acknowledge a death. A part of me is dying tonight. But I don't feel badly for me. I truly don't. I feel badly for the people outside the area who relied on us for their Pittsburgh sports information. I feel badly that I won't be able to talk with you nightly to share our thoughts and opinions, to share in the utter devastation of a Francisco Cabrera single or the unbridled hysterical joy of a San Antonio Holmes catch or a Sidney Crosby goal. Where but here could Pittsburgh sports nation meet to open our hearts and minds for all to see? I'm reminded of the last sentence in Jim Bouton's book, Ball Four, when he says, I spent my entire life gripping a baseball only to realize it was the other way around. For 18 years, I thought I was in control of sports beat, but turns out it was in control of me all along. Stan, as your production crew and, of course, as your colleagues, we wanted to gather as one big group to say thank you and also to say goodbye to the show. Sportsbeat has been a major part of all of our lives. We were very proud to work on the show. It was always honest, factual, and insightful. And it also served the city of Pittsburgh well, which leaves us all with only one thing to say about our time served here on Sportsbeat. Love the show! All those of you who may have loved the show at any point, I want you to know that I loved it every day for 18 years.